Hi everyone, Professor Bob Young here. In this instructional video, we are going to be graphing polar equations, and we're going to look at the first uh, handout here, which says special polar graphs. All right, now notice these equations here. When you have in polar form, we just talked about that in our last video, R equals A sine theta or A cosine theta, you're going to have the graph of a circle. And we're actually going to get into some of these graphs here in just a few minutes here. Uh, and some of these earlier ones in this top row are also referred to as limacons. I've seen textbooks refer them to that. So special kind of limacons here. Now notice um, the second graph is what's called a cardioid or a heart-shaped creature. I always tell students around Valentine's Day, this is a very good thing to come across is to get your significant other, get them a nice cardioid, make them a that. <laughs> So notice the equations here, R equals A plus or minus B cosine theta or B sine theta, depending here. Now notice the relationship A divided by B, regardless if it's plus or minus in here. If that's equal to 1, you're going to have the graph of a cardioid, and, and we'll get to that in a second. All right, now a one-loop limacon kind of looks like a cardioid too. I mean, very similar in appearance. But notice here, A is greater than zero, B is greater than zero. I forgot to mention that on the cardioid as well. But if those numbers, A divided by B, is a number between one and two, you're going to have a one-loop limacon here. And also on these, if you ha have an inner loop limacon here, notice it says A is going to be less than B here. All right, so there's different things about these A and B numbers when we get to the graphing portions and so forth. Now, for you race car drivers out there, the Leminskit, the figure eight creature, it's R square equals A square cosine two theta or A square sine two theta. Okay, and then here's something else for you Valentine's Day people, the rose curves. Some say love, it is. Okay, I better not start saying keep your day job young here. <laughs> but notice the rose curves, both of them here. Same formulas, R equals A cosine N theta or A sine N theta. And it depends on N. the end number here is if you have an even number of petals, um, it's going to double your number of petals. Okay. Now, for example, here, this graph has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So N would probably be uh, cosine four theta or sine four theta or something like that. But if N is odd, Notice this has five petals. Um, this would be five um, theta or cosine five theta or sine five theta here. So we'll get to the even and odd numbers as well. And then you've got the Archimedes spiral here when R equals theta and theta is greater than or equal to zero. All right, now the, the symmetry test for polar equations. And I don't remember if y'all remember these for your... Uh, um, college algebra, pre-calculus algebra courses, but you used to have tests for symmetry um, for x, y, and the origin in the rectangular coordinate system. So the x-axis symmetry test was replace y with negative y to see if you got the same equation back or the same graph back. Um, the x-axis symmetry test replace I'm sorry, the y-axis symmetry test, replace x with negative x. The origin symmetry test, replace both x with negative x and y with negative y to see if you get the same thing back. So on the polar ones here, notice we've got some tests for symmetry that we're going to look at and do as well as we get to the problem sets here. And here's what the symmetry tests look like for... Uh, the polar axis one here. Now notice this one has symmetry about y or theta equals pi over 2. This one is symmetry about x, okay, here, or the polar axis. And this would be symmetry about the pole here, 180 degrees. 
Okay, now up here, here is something to be concerned with. Note that sometimes a polar equation fails a, a particular test for symmetry, but may have that symmetry on inspection. Now, this never happened in the rectangular system, folks. So you may do a test for symmetry. It, it may fail it. You look at the graph, and it's like, oh, my gosh, it's got that symmetry, too. So these tests are not quite as, you know, um, accurate as the rectangular system, which is always working and, re and you know, works for that. So in these, um, you have to be careful. And we'll look at that. And I also wanted to give you some quick tests for symmetry. Now, these work a high percentage of time. And here's what I'm going to say on the bottom here. If the graph has r equals some function in terms of sine theta, most of the time it's going to have that theta equals pi over 2 or y-axis symmetry. Or the graph of r equals some function in terms of cosine. Remember, cosine matches up with the x-axis, so it tends to have polar axis symmetry. So I guess the next thing is just to get in and start graphing them. All right, All right so we'll look at example one here. It says graph the polar equation r equals 2 minus 2 sine theta. Okay, one thing I want to point out here is since you have r in terms of sine in this problem, we're going to have theta equals pi over 2 symmetry most of the time now whenever you have sine involved there and remember this matches up with a uh, y-axis symmetry here so we want to keep that in mind now we are going to actually do some some polar test later on in the video here but I'm just going to go out and put you on a limb here and say this is normally going to work all right now I'm going to put some angles in here so we can get some polar points to a uh, plot so I'm going to take first quadrant ones here I'm going to let uh, theta be zero radians and I want to be in radian mode here um, pi over six pi over four pi over three and pi over 2. All right, so I want you to evaluate the R values here. Now, you can get your calculators out and go to radian mode, but my students that know the unit circle don't need to do that. We're just going to put 0 in here for the sine of theta, and we know the sine of 0 radians is 0, so we're going to have 2 minus 0. The R value would be 2. All right, at pi over 6, you would have... Uh, pi over 6 the sine is 1 half now if you want to you can go ahead and write it like this because this is how you would put these in your calculator anyway in radian mode now if you're in degree mode you're in trouble now the sine of pi over 6 we should remember is 1 half so we're going to have 2 minus 2 times 1 half is 1 so 2 minus 1 your calculator should give you 1 here now for these other values, uh, pi over 4, remember the sign of that is the square root of 2 over 2. Pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So you're going to get some R values. We want to round, let's say, to the nearest tenth. So when we come over here and we plot them, we'll see that better. So I want you to pause right now, and I want you to get me these other R values, and we'll come back together and make sure they match up. All right, as we come back, I went ahead here and I put in pi over 4 in for the angle here. So 2 minus 2 times the sine of pi over 4 came out about 0.585786, and it kept going here. So I'm just going to round that to about 0.6. At pi over 3, I got 0.3. And at pi over 2, I got 2. Now, one other thing we want to mention on these graphs, uh, you'll see this in a lot of textbooks and stuff, and they'll put, it looks like absolute values around the R value, but that's not what it means here. In polar graphs, this means the maximum R value when you're graphing these, all right? And that's going to be the largest number in this polar graph for R. So we'll get back to that and we'll look at it when we finish here. So let's come over here and plot these polar points. So I'm going to go from the pole here out two circles. This is my first point, um, two, zero over here. All right, now remember, since this has that theta equals pi over 2 or y symmetry, if we go to this direction, we can go ahead. I like to do the Publix thing on this. Buy one, get one free. The BOGO. 
<laughs> All right, at pi over 6, I'm going to go 1 here. And again, with Y symmetry, buy 1, get 1 free here. All right. At pi over 4, about 0.6. So I'm kind of going to come in here a little bit past a half, put a point here. Same thing here across Y. Buy 1, get 1 free. At pi over 3.3, notice we're getting closer and closer in here to the pole. So we got these points. And at pi over 2, we're back at 0. So we have the point so far. So these are the points using symmetry. I went ahead, I plotted them in the first quadrant, and then that gave me polar um, across the, the y-axis, or theta equals pi over 2 symmetry there. And notice these numbers. We said if earlier in the video, if the a and b numbers, a over b, it doesn't matter about this sign, were to equal 1, we would have what's called a cardioid, which is a specific kind of a, a limacon. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the, the points here. Now, we're not done yet, but we're, we're getting there. Okay, so let me... My, my writing tablet's slippery, so I have to be careful here. You can kind of see the heart-shaped thing starting to form. Now, notice to get the rest of the cardioid, I need some more, um, some more angles in here so I can get this quadrant, which I can go ahead and use that theta equals pi over 2 symmetry to graph here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in angles in the third. Now you could pick fourth, but I'm just going to go third here since we've been going that direction. So I'm going to take, let's say, 7 pi over 6 radians, 4 pi over 3 radians. Um, I missed 5 pi over 4 in between there, but I'm going to get that one. I want to get all these angles in here really specific, and then 3 pi over 2. So that will give me all of these around so I can use symmetry to get these. So go ahead, stop, pause, see if you can get these R values here. So on, on this one, you would put in 2 minus 2 times the sine of 7 pi over 6 here. Now we should know that one anyway. This is a unit circle value. The sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So this would be 2 minus 2 times negative 1 half would be 1. So this would get us 3 here. That's what you should get. And you go ahead and put in the rest and we'll come back. All right, so we're back to finish this first graph here. So at 7 pi over 6, we're going to go out 1, 2, three circles here, and then buy one, get one free out here, all right? Um, at four pi over three, I'm going out 3.7 circles, one, two, three point sevens, a little bit past here, and remember Y symmetry, buy one, get one free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At five pi over four, now, this is a bad 4 here. Let's make that 4 here. We're at 3.4, so I'm going to go out 1, uh, 2, 3.4 is not quite a half here. Buy 1, and you can kind of see this thing lining up here. Get 1 free. And then at 4, I didn't even need to use my calculator on that, this one because the sine of uh, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, which gives us, if we come down 3 pi over 2, we would go out four circles, and then you will see the rest of this graph of the cardioid. And forgive my... <laughs> shaky hand here. Now, the ones that we get to in the homework will look a lot better than mine here, all right? But uh, my writing tablet's just slippery. Now, one last thing to look at here. Notice the maximum R value when we did this. We went all the way around, really, from 0 to 2 pi with symmetry. Uh, the largest R value we ended up with here was 4. All right, so that concludes the first example, and we will carry on with a similar format. All right, example two, it says graph the polar equation R equals 2 cosine theta. Now, when I look at this one, since it has R in terms of cosine, I'm going to say this is going to have, and I change colors again. Y'all know I like my colors here, polar axis symmetry. 
And remember, the polar axis matches up with the x-axis when it comes to polar graphs here. So we're going to say it has that symmetry. And again, we're going to do the test for symmetry. If you don't believe me, we will do them. All right, so once again, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to put in those first quadrant angles, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. All right, let's do it. Cosine 0, 1 times 2, 2. Pi over 6. Now, some of these are going to give you decimal answers, so I'm going to say go into radian mode, and I want you all to come back here, and let's, again, round these to the nearest tenth. So we'll try to speed this process up a little on some of these graphs. All right, so we're back here. So when I put pi over 6 in here, remember the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2 times 2 would get you the square root of 3, or about 1.7 radians. All right, pi over 4 square root of 2 over 2 times 2 would get you the square root of 2 is about 1.4. Pi over 3 is a half times 2 is 1, and at pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so you get 0. Um, now, we also want to say what's going to be our maximum R value here to stay consistent in case they ask us that in the homework. All right, so let's go ahead and plot this one here. So 2, 0, I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to put my first point here. Now, remember, this is going to be symmetric about x. Our first graph was symmetric about y, if you remember, with sine in it. All right, so at pi over 6, I'm going to go about 1.7 here. So this is how nice symmetry helps you. Um, buy one, get one free there. All right. Pi over 4, we're going to be at uh, 1.4 circles, so we're just going to go out here and plot 1.4, 1.4, BOGO. Pi over 3 is a perfect 1, and then a perfect 1 here, and then back to pi over 2, we'd be at the polar 0. Now, I don't know if you recognized this from earlier, but we're going to go to it here, so I'm going to go ahead. Now, this is supposed to be a perfect circle, <laughs> is what it's supposed to be. If I hit these points just right, maybe if I go around and do it enough times, you don't laugh at my circles and I won't laugh at your circles, but that's not too bad here for, for uh, what we've been looking at here. All right, so let me pause a second. We'll look at something. All right, so our first graph was um, 2 minus 2 sine theta. So it was a cardioid about y. This one looks like it's about x. Our second graph was uh, 2 cosine theta here, which, hey, that circle's much better than mine. It almost looks kind of like that one. This one looks like it went out 3 here, so it's a little bit different. But let's keep going. Let's do a few more examples just to make sure you have this. And I want to do one that has the rose curve and one that's got the Leminskit, just to show you all what's going on with those. All right, so example number three here, it says graph the polar equation r equals 2 sine 3 theta. Now, notice this is in the format for our rose curve, and I had to pick red because of Valentine's Day. If you want to make your significant other something nice, you could make one of these and cut it out on the polar paper and go, here, honey, be like, oh, baby. But anyway, some say love. All right, I'm not going to sing anymore. So once again, I started, I would, I would ask you to go back and look at that first uh, handout there in your, in your supplemental handouts and say, how many um, petals should this rose have? Now, notice I picked one with an odd number, so it should have three petals. Now, if this was a two, it would have four petals. If it was a four, it'd have eight petals. See, so even versus odd is important here. And I'm going to let you guys put in zero for the angle here. The sine of three times zero is zero. So I know I'm going to start here at the pole, the first point. Now I want you to put in these other R values and come back and we will plot our rows. All right, so what I did is I put in pi over 6 here for the angle. Now, what happened here is you've got 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2, of course, which the sine of pi over 2 is 1 times 2. You'll get 2. Now, if you put pi over 4 in here, and again, if you want to save some time, just keep that on your calculator. 
and then just go back and replace the 6 with a 4, and you'll get 1.7. Replace the 4 with a 3, you'll get 0. And then I got negative 2 when I went to pi over 2. Now, let me show you what happens here. Now, which symmetry would you all say this has? Would it be polar axis symmetry or theta equals pi over 2 symmetry? Now, hopefully, after we've done a few of these, you're going, hey, this is the sign. So I'm thinking this is going to have theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. All right, so let's plot these points and see what happens here. We should be looking for a rose with three petals, and you can cheat on these a little bit. So I'm going to put in the point pole here. Okay, pi over 6. I'm going out at pi over 6, two circles. Now, since this has y, I'm going to go two this way. Buy one, get one. 1 1.7 pi over 4. 1.7, look, a little bit past a half here. Buy one, get one. Pi over three, back to zero. So what's happening here is, I don't know if y'all can see it or not. Um, we're kind of doing, here's two of our petals. At pi over 3, it comes back in. Now, of course, these are supposed to be perfectly uniform. That's not a very good rose here. And at pi over 2, all right, if we were going pi over 2, negative 2, we would be coming back 1, 2, this direction. All right, so here's what I mean about cheating. And if you know how many petals you have, we've got really enough points here. Now, we could come down here and do that third and fourth quadrant thing but and I'm and I'm just going over this like my circle to try to make it prettier you could probably color this in but this would be your rose curve with three <laughs> petals all right now notice the maximum r value here would be a 2 on this one all right, so let me pause here. We'll do one more example, and then we'll go on to the homework questions. All right, so the last graph we're going to look at is called a figure eight or Leminskate, or some people might call it Leminskate. Is that like potato, potato? I don't know. But notice the, the equations here are going to be like the ones we were looking at. Is going to be r squared equals a squared cosine 2 theta or a squared sine 2 theta. So let's go ahead to that. All right, so for an example of a Leminskate, we're going to look at this uh, equation, this polar equation, r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta. Now, the thing here is when you go putting this in your calculator, you have to be kind of careful, folks, because remember, we're after r, not after r squared. So on this one, we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. So r is going to equal, do you remember, be careful, plus or minus 2 um, times the square root of the cosine of 2 theta. So the cosine, the square root of 4 comes out as 2, and then you have the rest of this underneath the radical. So when you go plugging in values here, now we could put in 0 here for theta. We'll get the cosine of 0 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So I would say when you put this first value in, you're going to get plus or minus 2 here. Now, I want you to come back and give me the other ones as well. And remember, we're looking for a figure eight with what symmetry? Well, this has cosine in it. So I'm thinking this is going to have polar axis or x-axis symmetry. Okay, so we'll make a note of that as we um, come back with the points. All right, so I went ahead, I put 0 in there, and I got plus or minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead from here, and I'm going to go uh, plus 2, 0. And then if I go 0, negative direction, minus 2, 0. All right, at pi over 6, I'm going to go out about 1.4. And remember, this, has, this could be plus or minus 1.4. So I could be over... Um, here as well, so negative 1.4. All right, um, at pi over 
uh, four, I'm back to zero here, all right? And then notice at pi over three what happens here. Um, I got an error. Now, Young, what's going on? I put pi over three. Well, the cosine of two pi over three is a negative number, and when you take square root, it's kind of like, hmm? All right, now notice what happens here. If I go ahead and I do my figure eight thing, I'm going to try to do it now and see if you all can stay with me, and we can use the symmetry on this. It's going to be I'm trying to get out here. Doing the racetrack thing. It almost looks like a nice bow tie. Well, if my tablet weren't so slippery, that would be about the graph of my Leminskit. Notice it has the polar axis symmetry here. So you've got your points, uh, pi over six plus or minus 1.4. So those values will get you the Leminskit. All right, so let me stop there. All right, let's go into the My Math Lab homework here. Now, I want you all to keep this special graphs here so you can look at these different types of equations as we go through the homework here. So I'm going to pop this up. And now it's just asking you to select what type of polar equation this is. Now, I would say that the first and the third look like the circle graphs right away here. And the second and the fourth would probably be the one I seek. You know, we, we graphed one of these earlier. This is a cardioid. Now, based on the symmetry, C, this one looks like it has the theta equals pi over 2 or y axis. You can go ahead, I think, and safely choose the last one there. So some of these, you're not even going to have to plot points and graph. You're just going to have to select them. Now, this one looks like a circle that's out five from the pole here. Now, which of these? Now, again, I would think these would be the cardioid, and the first and the last one would be graphs of the circle. Now, again, you're looking at your polar graph hand out there. Okay. So I would say since this one has X or polar axis symmetry, I would go with that final choice there. And then you can just motor through this homework. All right, continuing. Hi, ah, Rose curve. Now, this one has three petals, and if you need to, you can always blow this up a little bit here, and you have to be careful because that could make your answers shrink and stuff, <laughs> but I'm thinking if it's a rose curve, it looks like it goes out two here, so I would think it's either going to be the first one or the last one here. Now, the one would kind of make it, uh, remember, it would go out one more, so that would increase this uh, vertical one. So I'm going to think it's the first or last. Now this one to me looks like it goes about X or has polar symmetry. So I'm going to just be smart here. So you can gain a lot of homework here just doing this. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is do some polar symmetry test. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll look at this next creature coming up here. All right, so refer to this handout, and we are going to do our test for symmetry. All right, so we're given r equals 5 times the cosine of theta, and we want to test this for polar axis symmetry first. And remember, that's x-axis symmetry. So on the handout there, it says take and replace r theta with r negative theta here. So we're going to go ahead and just replace this with negative theta. And remember, just like test for symmetry when you were in college algebra, if this comes back the same as this, it has that symmetry. So in this one, we're going to say that it does have the x-axis or polar symmetry because based on your identities, the cosine of a negative angle, the even-odd identities, comes back the same here as what you started with. So I'm going to put, oh, happy face on this one. Hmm? <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to put a definite yes on this um, one we just did, and we're going to get the nice job here. Now, remember, on these other tests, you may do the test, and it may... 
um, fail the test but still have that symmetry. So here's where you have to be careful, and these drive students crazy. Now, I'm not going to put any questions like this on the test, but these are the ones where you have to kind of come back and say may or may not have. All right, it could have, it could fail that symmetry test and still have it. So these are kind of dangerous creatures since they don't always work. Not my favorite of questions there. All right, let's look at number eight here. It says, use your test for symmetry on this Laminskate or Laminskit. All right, so we'll do this one next. All right, so I wrote the equation r squared equals 100, 100 times the cosine of 2 theta. And we're going to look at our, our sheet here for the polar axis symmetry test. Now, remember, the x-axis or polar, polar axis symmetry test says replace r theta with r negative theta. So I'm going to do that real quick here. And remember, we did an example like this one, sort of. So this is going to come back r squared. The cosine of a minus 2 theta by your um, even-odd identities comes back as 2 theta. So I'm going to give this one the oh happy face. Um, definitely has that symmetry. And we might have expected that with cosine in there as well. But I actually want to do all the tests for symmetry on this one just to show you, see what happens here. Let's do the theta equals pi over 2 symmetry test, which says take r theta up here and replace it with negative r, negative theta. Now, that's one of them. There's another test there you can use as well, but I think this is the easier of the ones. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in here. Now, notice minus r squared comes out r squared again. This still comes out the same as this. So this one, I wouldn't just go put may or may not on all of these. This one actually works. So if it works, it definitely has that symmetry. It's like some of them may fail the test. If it fails, then you can say may or may not. So those are kind of cloudy there. I don't like them. Pole symmetry says replace r theta up top here. Replace r with minus r in here. And then theta stays the same. Now again, notice this example. It is going to have all three of these work. So if it works, it's got them. If it fails, may or may not have. So I hope that kind of clears things up with these. And we'll go ahead and put it in and show you. All right, so here we go on this one. We're going to say that one worked. Bang. This one worked. Number two, bang. And this one works. It's a clean sweep, baby. Now, notice after I put in my test for symmetry, then it pulls up some graphs for this one. So I would hope everyone knows based on the graph that this would have the polar axis symmetry, it would be the graph of C there. And we're off to the race. All right, continuing here, then they throw a few application problems in at you. It says each point R theta on the graph gives the sailing speeds R in knots of a craft sailing at an angle theta to the 10 knot wind. It says use this information to find the following equation here. It says what is the speed to the nearest knot of a sailboat sailing at 150 degree angle to the wind here? So looking at this graph here, I'll try to blow it up a little. So notice the curve at 150 degrees. I'm going to say we're right here. So it says the speed of a sailboat uh, looks like to the type in a whole number to the nearest number of knots here. I'm going to go out. It looks like about six knots. So I, I threw a few of those in there just to show you that this would apply in real life here. And there's one more last topic we'll look at and then we'll be finished with this section. All right, now in this problem, it says use the polar mode of the graphing utility with angle measure and radians to graph this polar equation, but we don't really need to do that. If you remember the Fantastic Four on your last video we looked at, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of this polar equation by sine theta to get r sine theta equals 6. 
Now, if you remember the Fantastic Four, R sine theta can be replaced with Y, remember our cosine theta is X, and there were the other ones you can review there. So you can change these into rectangular form to easily get the equation Y equals 6. Certainly looks like it would be choice C here. And we'll put it in just to be safe. Bang. And we'll do one more and say we are finished with the section. All right, for the next example, it says use a graphing calculator, which we're not going to do. We don't need these. Um, we're going to try this equation, r equals 7 over 3 minus 2 sine theta. So what I did is I multiplied by the LCD here of 3 minus 2 sine theta, and I got r equals... Uh, r times 3 minus 2 sine theta is 7. I distributed the r through, equals 7. I added 6 sine theta to both sides and ended up with this, which I went ahead and busted the 3 up underneath here. So it looks like I've got r equals 2 sine theta plus like another 2 and 2, or what is that, uh, 2 and 1 third there, 7 thirds. So I'm looking at the choices here, so I know it's not a rose curve because this would have um, an even or odd number on the angle here, like 2 theta, 3 theta, and so forth. So it either has to be B or it has to be C. Now with the sign, that's going to be what? Um, y or theta equals pi over 2 symmetry, so it could still be either one of these. So I'm going to... Um, let y'all look at that and see which one you would choose, and we'll come back here. All right, so I blew these up a little bit because sometimes you have to, and this one kind of tells you to watch out for the scaling here, too. Notice it says X is 2 and Y is 2 on the scale here, but these really aren't the same distance, and that drives me crazy sometimes about these graphs as well. Now, if I was just after 2 sine theta, I would say it would go, you know, probably two both directions, to here, but then it's got the plus seven halves in it, all right? So I'm going to guess C here, and these again are close, so, you know, you have to kind of gauge a little bit, watch those scales, and I think this should be enough for you to successfully complete graphing uh, the polar graphs. So have at it, and uh, y'all take care. Bye.